semen. Now, 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 before you judge me too harshly, I want you to know that is a mnemonic. That is an acronym to help you remember the four basic tissues of the human body. It stands for connective tissue, muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, and nervous tissue. Semen. Now, it's been my experience that if you make something slightly inappropriate, the mind is just more likely to remember it. So there you go. You are now going to remember the four basic tissues no matter uh, uh, no matter what anyone else says because it's just going to be like in your head, semen, I got this. Right? Our goal today is to discuss these four basic tissues in as much detail as we can. And to do that, we are going to be using, super excited about this, one of Ken Hub's new physiology study units. This belongs to our newly launched physiology section. This is something we've been working at behind the scenes for quite some time. And so we're going to go ahead and use one of these to help you understand the four basic tissues. Now you can see in this study unit, we talk about the chemical level all the way to the organism level. We talk about the four basic tissues. And if we scroll down, we even also talk about the different systems in the human body. Now we're going to go ahead and leave a link down the description below to an, it's not this exact study unit, but a 100% free study unit on reflex arcs. That's part of the nervous system that we are giving to you in celebration of launching our brand new physiology section. So go ahead, head down to the description below and you can click that link, but let's go ahead and figure out what's going on with these basic tissue. So I'm going to hit this button here and it's going to enlarge this so we can see this in all of its glory. And we're going to tackle these one tissue at a time. And it's important to understand that a tissue is basically just a bunch of cells working together for a similar function. And so here we are going to start with muscle tissue. And it's important to understand, like imagine this, right? imagine I could like snap my fingers and a human being just would turn into the tissues, right? We could organize those tissues into four piles. Yes, right, that's the four basic tissues. But each tissue has a subtype. So for example, with muscle tissue, we have skeletal muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, and smooth muscle tissue. And we're gonna see that there are subtypes for all of these tissues. So while I say you are made of four basic tissues, you're made of more tissues than that. These are just the basic ones that we can then subdivide. So as we look at this with muscle tissue, again, we have skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. We gotta ask ourselves, where do we find these and what do they do, right? So skeletal muscle is, this is important to understand, this is voluntary, right? Like all of this that I'm doing right now, that is all skeletal muscle. These are multinucleated cells. They primarily attach to the skeleton, which is probably no surprise to you because it's called skeletal muscle. And what's cool is we can actually follow this down. You can see we have the little uh, image on an illustration of what kind of looks like biceps brachii. It's not meant to be anatomically accurate, but this would be biceps brachii. And typically they're connecting two aspects of the skeleton and then they're gonna cause a joint to move. Skeletal muscle is all about producing movement. Again, not every single skeletal muscle is going to be attached to the skeleton. There's, there's definitely exceptions, but that is still gonna be very typical. Cardiac muscle, on the other hand, we can see that this belongs to the heart. And so it comes down and you can see the heart right here. Now, this is similar in a lot of ways to skeletal muscle, but if you look closely, you're gonna see that these cells are branched and that allows it to kind of like get almost like tangled in on itself. And then it can actually, when it contracts, it kind of like pumps like that. It's a really interesting type of muscle tissue, but the big takeaway for our purposes right now is this is involuntary, right? You cannot like think to your heart and be like, all right, heart, 106 beats per minute. Right? That's just not possible, right? You, can, you are only in charge of your heart rate indirectly. You know, you start doing some jumping jacks or some push-ups or something along those lines, but you cannot just consciously say, all right, heart, speed up or slow down. It's just not possible. But then the other type of muscle is called smooth. And smooth muscle is a totally different type than these uh, right here. Um, what this basically does is this is a type of muscle tissue that is really good at being like turned into different shapes, right? Imagine like you could turn a sheet of cells, right? If you look closely, you can see that we have a cell, then we have another cell next to it, then another cell next to it. Imagine all of them like in the sheet, and then you could turn that sheet into like a tube. Right? And then you can, and then what'll happen as the muscles contract, the muscle cells, the whole thing will contract at once. It's almost like, you can almost think of it like electricity propagating through like a pool of water or something along those lines. And what happens is the whole thing is just gonna contract. 
Whereas with the skeletal and cardiac, they kind of shorten. This one, it's like it, it's really about just like you, it's like a sheet contracting. So you'll find smooth muscle. You can see like in the walls of hollow organs. So like an easy example of this would be the stomach. Uh, the stomach, right when the stomach is ready to empty its contents, and if we go down here, whoop, you can see um, this is going to be inside of the small intestine. Here is going to be the stomach. When the stomach contracts, it's going to squeeze into the intestines. Right? You do not think about this. That's another important thing to understand. Smooth muscle is also involuntary. Right? You do not have to tell your stomach to release its contents. It does that all on its own, and it's just going to be a hollow organ, and it's going to contract and squeeze it into the small intestine. So these are the three types of muscle tissue. So then we go over to nervous tissue. And with nervous tissue, this is where we see the brain, the spinal cord, and then nerves. So the brain, which everyone can see here, I think most of you are gonna feel pretty confident about where you can find your brain. Uh, the brain, there's so much we could talk about. I mean, like, I mean, it's neuroscience after all, right? This is neurology. But just understand the brain is a very specific type of tissue, right? This is nervous tissue. This is as basic as it gets. The cells that belong to the brain and the spinal cord and the nerves, these are called neurons. And then you have other cells that are surrounding and supporting them called glial cells or neuroglial cells. They have all sorts of different names, um, but if you've ever heard of this term called myelination, it's just basically the process of wrapping around those cells and it supports them in various ways. My point is simply this, how special is nervous tissue? Right, like nervous tissue is these cells of communication. They, they use action potentials to send a signal and they, like, it's nervous tissue that stimulates the muscle tissue, right? Nervous tissue is where we process all of the information. Right now, I am somehow in your nervous tissue. I'm in your brain. You're processing with 86 billion neurons all just firing. It's, it's amazing when you really start to think about it and possibly a little unnerving, which I didn't mean that as a pun, but now that actually makes sense. Regardless, the brain is where you process information. The spinal cord is gonna be this thing right here. This is where signals will go out of the brain or also go into the brain. You can think of the spinal cord as a two-way street. So information is going up or information is going down. And then you have these things called nerves. Right? So nerves are going to be the basically the things that the spinal cord are uh, what's branching off of the spinal cord. It's probably a better way to put it. So you have outgoing nerves, you have incoming nerves, right? We would say those are sensory versus motor. The point here is the nerve, the nerves, the peripheral nervous system is how you get information to the spinal cord to go to the brain, or it's where information goes from the brain to the spinal cord out the nerves to get to the other tissues and cells and structures of the body. All of that is going to be part of nervous tissue. All right, so we'll scroll down here and then we get to meet epithelial tissue. Now, epithelial tissue, there are many different types, right? You can have like simple squamous, uh, simple cuboidal, stratified uh, columnar. There's all sorts of different ways we could classify it. But epithelial tissue, these are cells that are meant to basically be lining cells, right? You see them on the inside. You can see like the lining of hollow organs. So if we were to go back up here on the inside of your stomach or the inside of your small intestine, on the inside of the large intestine, all of those are coated and covered in epithelial tissue. Again, we can classify those cells to be different, right? We have different names for them, but at the same time, they're all epithelial cells. Um, blood vessels, the inside of every single blood vessel is made of epithelial cells, right? Epithelial tissue. Um, this is gonna be essential because they are, get to be so thin that that allows for nutrients and all sorts of other things to do this thing called diffusion, where they're going from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. My point is, in the inside of every single blood vessel is made of epithelial tissue. And then the skin is the one that everyone is aware of, right? So like this right here is the layer of skin is called your epidermis, but it's made of stratified squamous epithelium. That is just the classification we would use for that type of epithelial tissue. There's epithelial tissue all over the place. You have epithelial tissue on the surface of your brain. I mean, you know, like it is literally everywhere. This is a very common tissue. And then the last one is going to be connective tissue. 
In connective tissue, there are many different types, right? You can see we have adipose tissue, which is your fat. So they're showing everybody's favorite spot, the love handle. Uh, and then, and by the way, adipose tissue, that's going to be for energy storage. It's also helpful with insulation. It's also extraordinarily important for what are called secondary sex characteristics, meaning that once we hit puberty, depending if it's male or female, the hormones will start to actually cause adipose tissue to grow, right, energy to go to those areas in very specific places. My point being, like, say, for females, hips and thighs, for example, estrogen and other hormones are going to be essential in actually doing that. That's what we call a secondary sex characteristic. But everybody has adipose tissue because adipose tissue, its primary function is energy storage. It's saving calories for a rainy day. Well, that is a type of connective tissue, right? Tendons, ligaments, bones. If you think about it, like when we break down this term connective tissue, it's like, what are we really saying? Like there's, there's, there's a bunch of more technical ways we can describe this, but I want you to think about it for a second. It connects. <laughs> like connective tissue connects. Tendons connect muscles to bone. Ligaments connect bones to other bones. Bones are connected to each other and they're vital for support and movement, right? That's the whole purpose of connective tissue. And adipose tissue, while yes, it is primarily there for energy storage, it is still there to also connect things because the adipose tissue is what connects the dermis and the epidermis to the underlying fascia and your musculoskeletal system. So, I mean, it's, it's when you really start thinking about it, it's like, okay, yes, there are, and we'll go ahead and hit this so we can see all of them at the same time. Yes, there are only four basic tissues of the body, but when you start breaking them down into the various subtypes, you start to see, Oh, like, like, like quite literally, I just told you what the human body is made of. Like, that's what you're made of. You're made of semen. You're made of connective tissue, muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, and nervous tissue. As a reminder, this is part of a larger study unit in our new physiology section. We're going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description below for you to check out one of our other study units from physiology on reflex arcs. That is 100% free. Um, and while you're down there, if you could go ahead and like this video, leave us a comment, let us know what else you'd like us to discuss in the future. But thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you next time.